Hello YouTubers! This channel is all about RV living, traveling, and do-it-yourself projects. Please hit the subscribe button below. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Uh, today we're going to be building the bus bar for this uh, battery. It's what's going to carry all those little busy electrons down there to the inverter. Uh, I think I overstretched my shoulder, patting myself on the back on this uh, bus bar, but we'll see if you like it as much as I do. So let's get to it. So we start off uh, cutting this number six welding cable, 27 inches long. <coughs> I couldn't find my cable cutter, so I had to improvise with a pair of uh, old uh, fence pliers. But surprisingly, those pliers cut that number six pretty good. It just left a couple of strands that didn't cut that were hanging out of it. Here I'm just showing you the measure, the longest run of uh, your bus bar. It's the part we're going to strip on uh, that off of that 27 inch piece of uh, cable uh, we just cut. So on this. 10 by 10, uh, I need uh, 15 inches stripped off of this 27 inch piece of uh, wire. Now you want to be very careful stripping this wire because these are very fine strands. That's the reason it's so flexible. It makes it around corners real easy. So you want to take your time and not damage this wire as you're uh, opening it up. Here I'm just, there is a hole between uh, where the batteries will be that I'm feeding that down and I'm putting the top of that uh, sheathing that's left on there to the top of this uh, surface that's uh, routed out on this um, holder. Once that glue sets, there's no way, no matter how much you tug on this wire from the external, uh, it's going to move uh, inside this holder. It's all secure in there. Now this glue I'm using is a high temp uh, hot glue that's uh, used on uh, circuitry boards and electronics. Have you ever tore a piece of electronic apart? You would be surprised to see how much stuff is actually glued onto that board. And uh, so this glue, I forget the temperature rating on this glue, but uh, it's it's uh, made for high temperature. I'm not so sure it would hold up uh, on the dash of your vehicle on a hot Texas summer day. Uh, but uh, where this battery sits inside the RV, uh, it's so well insulated, it doesn't act like an oven uh, whenever it's sitting out in the direct sun. So uh, I don't have any problem with this, this uh, glue melting. However, if you do need to get it apart, the heat gun will heat it up enough where it will liquefy again and uh, then you can move it where you need it. Now I'm putting the first strand down the center. Now I am using hot glue to uh, uh, secure it into this holder and you see on the other end I'm gonna leave hanging off now um, how I close it up and uh, make it secure found that my fingers don't like that hot glue. It burns it pretty good so I got a little piece of stick to hold that bar down the groove until that glue stiffened up enough to hold it down in there.
This actually goes pretty quick. Um, I'm real surprised how easy it is to put all this wire in this uh, uh, holder. Much easier than messing with that uh, uh, nickel stripping because I actually grooved that wider groove wide enough I could have used nickel stripping and then I would have soldered to it into you know the wire but once I stripped this wire down and I found these seven coils in it I didn't see a reason why I needed to use that nickel stripping um, this wire will carry the current uh, well enough that now if you had a battery that uh, you were building that was longer than 10 cells because each one of those wires is going to handle 20 batteries and I'm going to be pulling max a little over half an amp out of each battery so 20 times a half is around 10 amps and that wire is rated for at least 20 amps one strand of that is Here I'm just putting some protection up here at the top uh, because I'm going to be pulling one strand out of that those three I've got in there down that next run and then on the outside the longest runs I'm actually doubling it up so there's one on the center one on each side of the center and then on the two outside uh, it's actually doubled up uh, and I did that because the longer runs I'll have uh, a little bit harder for those electrons to get down through there. Um, this wire is such so fine, and those ele little electrons, they actually travel on the surface, the circumference of the wire. So you get a big number six solid core wire, and uh, you've got so much surface area, but you got thousands, I think there's 1,100 tiny little wires in uh, this, this uh pulled up wire here and each seven I put a chart up here in a second and we'll see what it says I think it's like a hundred and seventeen uh, wires per each coil Now that wire I'm putting in, that's the one that's doubled up. And I did this on the other side. I just uh, edited it out just to shorten up this video. It got too long. I try to keep these videos under 10 minutes. But um, it was hard on this one to get everything in. And uh, so uh, I cut some corners a couple of places. But I wanted you to see that this wire is actually uh, twisted up and doubled up here on the outside. Here I've rotated the battery from your last view 90 degrees and the end is to your left and uh, to keep these wires from coming unfrayed uh, I put heat shrink three quarters inch long uh, on the ends here and I'll bend them over and glue them to the 
recessed area uh, between that pipe and uh, they become very secure and I trim them off to the bottom of that they're about third, uh, three quarters inch uh, pieces of the pipe I cut them off the bottom of the pipe Now there's enough wire on the three metal ones left over. I, I uh, using that fine thread for the ground side when I soldered the batteries onto the, these uh, bus bars. So none of that's going to waste. Uh, that center one has enough left over to <clears throat> do four batteries. And the two on each side of the center have enough to do two batteries. And uh, that little bit of wire that's hanging off in those three there does solders in all the batteries on the negative side. We are doing the negative side right here. Even though you see the positive side of those batteries that are in the holder, they're just there to, well, I haven't taken them out since I built the holder. But um, one thing to note is when you're doing these bus bars, the bus bar on the other side will be opposite of this one. So your power comes in uh, through the negative side from the right and it exits on the positive side to the left um, that's best practice when you're when you're building batteries you don't want to put the bus bar facing the same direction on both sides of the battery here I am uh, putting a 75 amp power pole connector on this uh, wire and um, that little tool for $24 is one of the best thing I've ever bought um, it crimps those you don't have to solder it puts them on where they're not going to come off and you don't have any uh, restriction or anything that you get sometimes when you solder uh, connectors on so that's it now the battery on the left is a completed battery it was the first one I did and the, the one on the right is the holder that has no batteries in it and that cable and that's how they will be wired up. Uh, that black one that doesn't have a connection, it will go down to the inverter. And then the positive will go to negative, and the positive off the neck will go to negative through 7S. Seven, seven and um, that's how it's done. Thanks for watching my video. And if you found any value, please hit the like button below. Thank you very much.